What have mice and whales to deal with decibels? Well, they show us one main reason why we use decibels when dealing with signal magnitudes and ratios in electronic engineering. Look at the graphics. If you select a good resolution for displaying the whale, you can hardly see any mouse smaller than a mouse. But if you select a good resolution for the mouse, only a small section of the whale can be displayed. Ok, it's not our daily business to compare mice with whales, but engineers have to deal with numbers and some of these numbers may vary from very large to very small. As very often an electronic calculator is not at hand, we are looking for a method to simplify these computations. Remember that in the past electronic calculators weren't available at all. The usual tool for calculations was the slide rule. Let us now derive the solution for the mentioned problem. In many cases what is most important is the ratio of two quantities. For example, a mobile radio base station might transmit approximately 80 Watt of power. The mobile phone receives only about 2 picowatt, which is 0.000000025% of the transmitted power. This sounds very uncomfortable, doesn't it? Whenever we must deal with large numerical ranges, it is convenient to use a logarithmic system for values. The base station in our example transmits at plus 49 dBm, while the mobile phone receives minus 47 dBm, producing a power difference of 106 dB. Now the values sound much more comfortable, but where do they come from? We have just heard about the possibility of the unit dB, allowing us to express huge and very small quantities in moderate values. This is quite important for all kinds of diagrams and displays of measurement instruments. And there is another big advantage. You can use the simple rules of logarithmic calculation where multiplication turns to addition and division to subtraction. Values taken by the power of a number are reduced to multiplication and so on. If we cascade for example two amplifiers with power gains of 12 and 16, we obtain a total gain of 12 times 16, which is 192. In logarithmic terms, the two amplifiers have gains of 10.8 dB and 12 dB, producing simply by addition a total gain of 22.8 dB, which is definitely easier to calculate. These are some of the main reasons why we like to make our computations in decibels. Without dBs, the only way to express huge and small quantities is to use prefixes for exponential values, as you can see in the graphic by pressing the buttons. Using log values means in simple words that you express values as 10 by the power of an exponent, and that you leave away the 10 using only the exponent above. Also, the base 10 logarithm of the ratio of two power levels is a dimensionless quantity, the pseudo-unit Bell was introduced in honor of the inventor of the telephone, Alexander Graham Bell. This Bell is simply the sign for talking in log values. Let me tell you an example. If an amplifier has a gain of 10 or a gain of 10 Bell, is a big difference. The first number means that the output is 10 times the input. The second means that the output is 10 times by the power of 10 times the input, what means a linear factor of 10 billions. In daily work the bells are rather coarse. For example, the log values are very often fractions below 1. In order to obtain more manageable numbers, we use the decibel instead of the bell for computation purposes. So we have to multiply the bell values by 10. This is just what we did, subdividing a meter into decimeters or centimeters. Please click on the button to get the definition of decibel and an example of a calculation. Of course, it is also possible to convert decibels back to linear values. We must first convert from decibel to bell by dividing the value by 10. Since we are using the base 10 logarithm, we must raise the number 10 to this power. Just press the button to get a conversion table from logarithmic to linear values. Please note that linear ratios being smaller than 1 yield negative log values. 
Never call them negative ratios, that's not correct. Very often we have to deal not with power ratios, but with voltage ratios. How can we transfer our knowledge to that? We all know that a power level can be expressed by the squared voltage divided by the resistance. If you replace P1 and P2 by this formula, you will get the following term. Using the familiar rules of logarithmic calculation, we can transform it like this. Often, especially in testing engineering, the reference resistance is equal for the whole impedance system. Thus we can simplify as follows. Please note that the voltage squared remains in the log computation as a factor of 2. This explains why we use 10 times log for power ratios and 20 times log for voltage ratios. Don't be confused that you have different dBs for voltage and power. If you have, let's say, 10 dB, this is valid for voltage ratios and power ratios as well. Only if you want to calculate back to linear, you must consider the two different factors of 20 for voltage and 10 for powers. If you click on the buttons, you will get a conversion table from power ratio to voltage ratio. Please note for this chapter that concerning formulas and units we sometimes deviate from the international standard specified in ISO 31 and IEC 27 where it is common practice. Being familiar with log ratio calculation, we will find out rather quickly that it would be a good idea to have log values not only for ratios but also for absolute voltages and power. Unfortunately, mathematics simply forbid to do something like 10 times the log of 3 watt. But why not express absolute values in ratios? An absolute quantity for the logarithmic power ratio is obtained referring an arbitrary power level to a fixed reference quantity. The reference quantity most commonly used in telecommunications and radio frequency engineering is a power of 1 milliwatt into 50 ohm. This reference quantity is designated by appending an m for milliwatt to dB, which results in dBm. Other frequently used reference quantities include 1 watt, 1 volt or 1 microvolt, which are designated as dB watt, dB volt or dB microvolt. From the relative values for power level P1 or U1 respectively, referred to power level P2 or U2 respectively, we obtain absolute values using the reference values above. These absolute values are also known as levels. Let's have a look at an example. A level of 10 dBm means a value which is 10 dB above 1 mV and a level of minus 17 dB microvolt means a value which is 17 dB below 1 microvolt. Click on the buttons to see a table of common levels and their application. In the graphic you see a sequence with two amplifiers, an attenuator and a cable with losses, which has different amplification or attenuation factors. The big advantage of ratios and levels in dB or dB microvolt respectively is that such chains of components can be calculated very easily by addition or subtraction of the corresponding dB values. Care has to be taken of the pseudo units because 20 dBm minus 10 dBm is not 10 dBm, but 10 dB. In measurement engineering, we usually remain in impedance systems with typically 50 ohm. So we have a constant ratio between voltage and power. If we have a voltage of 1 microvolt at 50 ohm, the resulting power is 1 microvolt squared and divided by 50 ohm, which yields 2 times 10 by the power of minus 14 watt. In milliwatt, this is 2 times 10 by the power of minus 11. 
1 microvolt corresponds to 0 dB microvolt, while the power in milliwatt corresponds to minus 107 dBm. So the transition from voltage dB microvolt to dBm and vice versa is based on the fact that 0 dB microvolt is equal to minus 107 dBm at 50 ohm. To go from dBm to dB microvolt, you just have to add 107 dB and from dB microvolt to dBm you have to subtract 107 dB. In the end, we would briefly like to introduce the range of values you may come across in your daily job. The following table shows you some typical values used in RF testing.